And certainly uh, in that region of the country, uh, our man James Scully will be ready to bet uh, whichever whichever offers the best value. And James does a tremendous job at Brisnet uh, putting all the information together that uh, translates into wagers. A perfect uh, candidate to talk about this particular topic, pedigree handicapping and how it uh, affects your decisions uh, and your bets. James, good evening. Welcome back. Good evening, Steve. Thanks. Uh, Good evening, Jeremy. Pleasure to be with you. Good to have you back. All right. Thanks, Gus. James, and of course, you you can speak very much to uh, the the benefits of of the Brisnet Ultimate PPs and the various nuances and the information there. I see on the chat applet, uh, their guys are and gals are talking about uh, average winning distance. Talk a little bit about the information that you utilize regularly when trying to interpret pedigree and what it's going to mean in the circumstance in which you're applying it? Well, absolutely. The uh, ultimate past performances uh, uh, from Brisnet uh, provide in maiden races and in turf races a uh, trove of information. Um, For myself, I mean, there's no more, you know, uh, important angle than when a horse is trying something for the first time. I always uh, reference the pedigree stats, and as people have been mentioned on the chat, you know, you're going to get uh, information in the ultimate past performances on the on the sire, on the dam sire, on the dam herself, and on uh, any sales data that are included in there for the handicapper. Well, and talk about how you use it, which pieces of information, and how it translates into the decision making process for you. Well, absolutely. I mean, for me, any any time a uh, horse is trying to turf for the first time, I'm always interested in how many turf uh, winners are in that family. Uh, I always take a, a look at the, uh, you know, because basically, I mean, it's fifty fifty. I like I like to take a look at both the dam if she's produced a turf winner. Plus, you're going to get her her sire stats, which give you an indication of of a preference for turf or not, and. Um, uh, for the sire, it's really the first time out uh, percentage is going to be given to you, either a first time starter or a first time turf. Uh, another valuable as- aspect of it is, of course, like uh, the mud percentage win rate. Uh, that's where you really will find a, a great variance. You'll find some sires are-, are phenomenal on the turf and phenomenal with mud starts, or they're only strong in one category or another. And that's uh, uh, always potential edge when you have an off track. Uh, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we've talked about too tonight, it, it, again, uh, a Brisnet resource that to me is is the absolute uh, Bible is the American Produce Records, and I, I rely more and more these days, uh, James, on sibling performance. And when I'm trying to find a hint, not for a horse, not for Pletcher firsters or Chad Brown firsters going a route on the grass or Chris Clement first time turf going a route on the grass. The things that are obvious, we don't need help for those. We we need to find clues to find that twenty to one shot that that is it may run big that uh, is in a in a spot that whether it's based on uh, the purchase price as a yearling uh, or two year old in training or the connections uh, maybe slightly obscure it, it, you're looking for a hint that somebody is going to do something today that isn't so obvious and isn't obvious to the people looking at at just straight past performances and and for me that, that that's where the american produce records are, are just invaluable absolutely and like you know the statistics in the brist ultimate past performances are, are per, you know perhaps just giving you a win percentage or the number of uh, winners uh, uh at two that a mayor may have had but uh for the you know for the you can research through the American Produce Records all the offspring of a dam. You can uh, research, uh, uh, see whether, uh, you know, the, the 
the offspring of that horse today in a, in a baby race, uh, whether or not it took its siblings seven or eight starts to break its maiden, or whether they won first time out. So, I mean, the, the information that's available on American Produce Record is absolutely a, it's a it's a huge tool in my handicap, and um, I like to access it for you know as well as like looking up like the sales data of the offspring. Uh, one one aspect that you'll find in there that and it, this comes into play. I mean, it's not going to come into play like with Byron. Byron was like the top selling offspring of Awfully Wild. Now, obviously, when he ran first time out. Uh, he was no seeker. He was trained by Bob Baffer. It was really well regarded. But for so many of the hundreds or thousands of stallions out there that have offspring selling at sales, I, if I see a horse that is like the top seller for uh, a stallion, I'm giving that horse an extra look because there was something there that made him appealing before he even reached the races to the buyers. Well, and again, that that's exactly you know the the kind of you know the kind of clues that. Uh, that you want uh, and uh, the other uh, elements of this it doesn't have to be confined to to two-year-old racing uh, there's the occasion of course when you get to a certain point uh, in a season james where uh, horses that may have been bred for the turf uh, finally get a chance on the grass and uh, a lot of people that are handicapping are looking strictly at past performances that offer nothing but uh, you know pps on a main track and here's a horse trying grass for the first time if if there's nothing glaring about the pedigree meaning uh, english channel or uh, kittens joy or more than ready or you know any of the the turf types rock hard 10 you know the various uh, sire lines that uh, may have been uh, horses that themselves per- performed on the main track and and then have become turf influences certainly more than ready is one of those remarkable stories a, a horse that uh, you know is producing turf runners although the you know his his exploits came on dirt uh, the if you don't have a pedigree if you don't see rahi or dynaformer etc if if people haven't done any research to find out if there's some hidden turf influence in the family in the siblings elsewhere they're not going to necessarily bet this horse moving to the grass and this is where you find your opportunities and it as is the case so often in these conversations it takes some work you have to dig absolutely absolutely and and i'll tell you um, you know and uh, i i find valuable like the the mud statistic on there especially if i'm going to be playing uh an exotic an exactor trifecta superfecta uh where whereby <clears throat> like english channel is a good example of who you reference he's a 16 percent turf sire i mean you know anything anything higher than 10 percent is a good number a solid number for a turf sire and he's he's one of the best out there but english channel uh, uh his offspring on mud are 11 percent now compared to uh, uh giants causeway or or you know uh, uh some other turf sires uh uh they have a strong mud winning rate. English Channel doesn't, and that's like the kind of like like little like nugget. If I'm like weighing a horse, if this race is either off the turf or being run on a wet track, you know I'm going to tend to like look a little bit negatively towards a, a horse that's recognized as a turf sire but doesn't win at a high rate on a wet track. Uh, well, uh, very a uh, very good point to that, uh, Jeremy. You know, I want to jump into something that you guys have been talking about is – and going back to a question we got almost at the very beginning of the chat tonight when someone asked, what's more important, the trainer and the trainer intent or the pedigree? Well, if you're trying to pick a winner, maybe it would be the trainer intent. But if you're trying to find the price and value and improve your ROI, which we all are in this game – I think what you guys have just described there, the work that you put into it, how you can find the information on the horses and the pedigree, 
it's a little bit harder nugget to uncover than just knowing Steve Ashmussen's awfully good with a two-year-old. And, and so I think a lot of the betting public has flocked more to the trainer stats than they have some of these pedigree uh, elements. And while the pedigree elements are easier to find and easier to access now than they ever have been, it still takes a little bit more work than to just have that observational free-flowing betting that goes to the big trainers in the game. So to me, the question that, that you guys, with the way you've discussed it and how it was presented earlier to me, the value play is with the pedigree more than the trainers. Oh, I agree. I agree. There's a lot of merit to that, absolutely. I mean, you're 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 looking at uh, Todd Fletcher. You know his horses are going to get come ready to run. Um, a, you know, an, another trainer – might not uh, have that same uh, uh, direction, that same focus, and those horses there, you know, you're 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 not sure whether they're going to run or not right at first asking, and it takes, uh, you know, that's the, that kind of information that you want to research, pedigree wise. And I can give you one, in fact, for tomorrow, and and I I don't know I don't know what, what I'm going to do to start the pick six at Belmont uh, tomorrow and in that fourth race with this turf sprint maiden special for state breads and give you a perfect scenario. Here is Pat Kelly. And Pat is a guy who notoriously races his horses into shape. Uh, Pat never worries about the win percentage. He's as old school as they come. The the son of, of Hall of Fame legend TJ Kelly. And Tomorrow, in a really curious group of maidens, Pat is sending out a firster by the name of Light Years Away. This is a Freud out of the AP Indy Mare Luminate. And at first glance, you think to yourself, here is a guy that doesn't win first out, for starters. His 6% with 69, his last 69 runners, first out, two-year-old maiden special weights. And you look at the, the family, uh, you wouldn't necessarily think, you know, that Freud certainly gets turf runners. Freud is a, a, a 11% first out sire. But you look at the siblings and, and you, you go through the produce and it turns out that light years away is a full sister to Inte Domine, who was a, a, a steak winning New York bred that was fast uh, as a turf router. Uh, she was fast as a turf sprinter. And Inte Domine was good as a two-year-old. So here you're getting a, just a hint that uh, a guy that doesn't necessarily win with his early runners, he's 20-1 to 1 in here, Dylan Davis aboard. And uh, you've got just the, enough of a, of a inkling that there may be some talent certainly has worked pretty steadily uh and even for pat uh i see a 36 and 2 gate work which is a little unusual for pat that's fast so you know these are the little hints and it just helps you from being caught flat-footed james and if you if you've gone through with the fine-tooth comb can you do it every day for every race it's hard no but if you've got a certain system that that at least thoroughly checks a, a few nooks and crannies you're going to be that much more prepared when you know when some of those surprises pop up and and I, and as i've said repeatedly they don't have to be surprises that are winners surprises that are 38 to 1 uh, third uh, make the all the difference in the world if you're betting triples and supers yeah, absolutely, and that that and that information is all it's available on the American Produce Records. Uh, there's data on more than three million foals, uh, a, a million dams, and it, and uh, it's a, a updated daily. So uh, you know, it's you can use it on any device, uh, unlimited access. Uh, uh, it's a it's a great product. You know, I want to. I I vowed uh, earlier that today when I was thinking of things that. To discuss today, there is one portion of pedigree conversation that James and Jeremy and Sid and Kate and, uh, and I, if there's one piece of information we can pass on to everybody out there so that you sound as intelligent as possible when you discuss pedigrees with people. And the key 
to this is to always remember that a a horse is by the sire and out of the dam. It, 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 one of the things that is that'll that'll rankle anybody and that uh, you're having a discussion with if, if, when you when people say, "Oh, that one's out of AP and D." No, no, he's not out of AP and D. <laughs> he's by he's by AP and D. He's out of the mare. Just remember that any of these runners, they had to come out of something. They came out of the dam. <laughs> they mm-hmm. literally came out. So it's out of the dam and by the sire. If you learned one thing tonight, that should be it. Yeah, the, the other thing, too, is when you're talking with horsemen and you want to feel like you belong, always do your distances in eighths of a mile. I mean, it, it, the horse breathes <laughs> three eighths. You don't say furlongs. And, and I tried to be tricky one time. I thought when I was new in the game and I was just kind of starting to do the big events that I had finally arrived and I could talk like a horseman. And, and so I was talking to Baffert one morning and I said, so are you going to work this horse five eighths or six eighths? And he looked at me and he said, six eighths? What the hell are you talking about? You get to three quarters at that point. So you speak in eighths and quarters and you'll be all right. Drop the furlongs. <laughs> and a half I love mile it. as well. <laughs> well, it, it, James, uh, as always, valuable insight from you and uh, looking forward to a conversation uh, leading into Breeders' Cup. We'll have you, of course, on the show. Uh, we'll go through as we always do, and uh, get your opinions as we get close. Uh, Thanks as always. All right, thanks. You guys do a great job. Appreciate it.